A reading from the book Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 1 to 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest, who is in office at the time, and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labour upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God, and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. When my children were little, I somehow got into the habit of shouting out words of wisdom to them as they set off for school. I suppose I wanted to drill some wisdom into them, things they could draw on, not just during the day, but during a lifetime. Things to help them know who they were, where they came from, and the values and identity that would shape them. Some of them were just mottos and maxims that all of us have heard, like, let the shipwrecks of others be your sea marks. Sometimes it was little gobbets of scripture Proverbs and sayings of Jesus like faith, hope and love, these three abide. But the greatest of them, and then they were supposed to shout back, is love. A particular favourite was Proverbs 6.6. 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, and learn to be wise. I think they must have been the only five and six year olds in their class who knew what the word sluggard meant. Over the years, and as they got older, all these little sayings got distilled into a single sentence that I used to say to them virtually every day, and has kind of become a motto for our family. Not a text from scripture, not even a maxim I remember hearing anywhere else, but I would say to them, remember who you are. And what I meant by that, and what they received when I said it was, Remember the wisdom, the values, the identity that is expressed in all those other things we have said to each other about faith and hope and love. Remember that you are loved, that the deepest truth about you is that you are precious and beloved. This is the ground of your being, that you belong within a household of love and have been formed by the outpouring of love and not just the love of your parents and your family, but the love of a whole community, which is itself brought into being by the love that God has shown us in Jesus Christ, who, on the night before he died, said to his friends, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And that, there is no greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. 
and then in laying down his life through his dying and rising brings a new community and a new humanity into being. A community which is able to share in the very life of God and enter into that eternal and ever replenishing reciprocity of love which is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, a community who on this night, the night when Jesus rose from the dead, remembers the exodus of the people of God who's passing through the banked up waters of the Red Sea prefigures Jesus' passage through the dark and chaotic waters of death and is shared with us in the dying and rising of baptism whose solemn affirmations we renew tonight and then are signed themselves with the mark of the cross, the mark of love, the badge of Christian identity. Remember who you are. And isn't this what the people of God are doing in this passage from Deuteronomy? where the old agricultural ceremony of offering first fruits is linked with the liberation from slavery and the entrance of Israel into a promised land. And the injunction is given that they should make this response to remember their history and where they came from and therefore to remember their identity as well. There comes that most ancient of texts, words more ancient than almost any other in the Bible, thought to date back to at least the 12th century BC and perhaps further, an expression of identity and belonging that people recite in order to know who they are. Our Father was a wandering Aramean who went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien who became a great nation, mighty and populous, who was treated harshly and afflicted and who cried to the Lord and was brought out of slavery with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and was brought into a good land, one flowing with milk and honey, a place where death is no more and where all food is Eucharistic, life, feeding on life. The people of Israel remember that they were slaves and refugees before they entered into the land, and therefore they have a responsibility to share this land with other refugees as well. And for us, as it says, in the letter to the Ephesians, we remember that there was a time when we were without Christ, being aliens from the Commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, his blood shed on the cross and painted on the lintels of our hearts brings us into community with God. Therefore, we have a responsibility to live and share the good news of God's liberating love with others. As we find ourselves physically separated from one another and more fearful than we are used to and more confronted by the reality of death. This expansive narrative of hope and joy is needed more than ever. It will unite us. So, on this holy night, let us remember who we are, a people redeemed and set free by the dying and rising of Christ. It is our identity. Amen.
you come from? What are the values and identities that have shaped you? What are the fruits of your life and experiences that you offer back to God? Loving God, on this dark yet holy night, we pray for those who do not know their belovedness, for those whose earliest sense of self has been forged in homes and situations where they did not feel welcome, safe or loved, for those who have had spoken over them words that make them doubt their worth or feel that they have little to offer those who are afflicted, enslaved, oppressed, or feel that they are wandering through this world alone. Lord, wherever we have come from, and wherever we find ourselves this night, you promise that before us lies an inheritance of hope, and a land of new beginnings, flowing with the milk of your provision and the sweet honey of your grace. Lead us by your mighty hand into the embrace of your loving arms outstretched for us all on the cross. Help us to remember who we are, a people redeemed and set free by the dying and rising of Christ. It is our identity.
At Blackburn Cathedral, we watch and wait and pray. Abba, Father, we have heard you whispering our name, reminding us that we are known and loved. As we wait for the dawn to break, kindle in us the flame of your presence and breathe on the embers of our hope that we may dare to whisper hushed rumours of resurrection until morning comes. Amen. 